Hey everyone, MeltingMan234 here, and today I'll be doing my first action figures review. Today I'll be reviewing three figures based off of a game that was never finished called American McGee's Oz. I talked about it in an episode of Forgotten Media, and here's the link to the video if you're interested in seeing it. But anyway, let's take a look at the boxes. Each box shows the character with the logo at the bottom. On the side, there's a choking hazard warning, the logo showing the figure is for ages 17 and up, and a concept art of what could possibly be the Witch of the West. On the top, we have the name of the figure. On the bottom, we have the Carbon 6 logo, the CE symbol, recycling, and sad onion symbols, along with the barcode. On the back, we have a small summary of the game. In the time before the known adventures, the land of Oz was a dark place full of war and destruction. Collect all the characters from American McGee's Oz, the video game adventure where you're quest to defeat the dark powers that threaten the once great land. For more information, visit www.carbon6.com. I wonder if that website is still active. As for the characters, we have the Straw Golem, the Munchkin Worker, and a Flying Monkey. All of them are sculpted by Clay Sparks and licensed by Milo's Workshop and Carbon 6 Incorporated. They all have a picture of an unnamed character as the background, probably the main character. Now that we know what the boxes are like, let's have a look at the figures. We'll start off with the Munchkin Worker. He's about 5 inches tall and 3 inches wide, so he's a pretty small figure. As you can see, he's all dressed in a steampunk style with his goggles and his vest that are very well detailed. His head can move, but not a whole lot. He can move his arms up and down and move them around, and for his legs, they don't move at all, so that's it for joints. So anyway, this figure is very nice and pretty well detailed for its time. Next we have the Straw Golem, pretty creepy for a scarecrow. He's about 8.5 inches tall and 3 inches wide. He's all wrapped up in ropes and pieces of straw that are sticking out of his arms. His face is very well detailed with the stitches as well as his face and so on. Now that I think about it, the face kind of reminds me of the Executioner from the upcoming video game Alice Madness Returns, another game by American McGee. He's the only character that comes with an accessory, a farming sickle. If it's right into his hand, it's very easy to slip in and slip out. His head can move around, his arms can move up and down, his hands can twist sideways, and of course his legs don't move. But either way, it's still a pretty cool figure. And last but not least, we have the Flying Monkey. If you thought the Flying Monkeys from Wicked were creepy, then take a look at this guy. He's about 5.5 inches tall and 8.5 inches wide. By the looks of it, his design is very gargoyle-like, especially how the wings are. His face looks like an undead rock star, and the way his body looks is very well detailed. His fur is well done with the lines and style, with a little bit of blood stains all over his body. The claws feel a bit smooth, and unlike the other two, he doesn't have any movable joints. So he's more of a statue and might look good for a Halloween decoration. After they released this figure, a few days later, they made a Tower Records edition, showing the monkey with his hand and mouth covered in blood. But other than that, it's a very nice piece of art. So in closing, all three figures are very well detailed and pretty cool. These figures are very rare nowadays, and I was lucky to find them at a reasonable price on eBay. The worker was about $14.95, the straw golem was $15.95, and the monkey was around $20. Bucks. It would have been nice to see these guys in action if American McGee's Oz wasn't cancelled. Well, that ends my first action figure review, so this is Melting Man 234 signing out.